All right, welcome to the Young Turks. Uh, massive show for you guys. I'm not on that camera. I'm on this camera. Go. That's not even right, although we are going to go to war at some point. But I meant... Touch me on my studio. My new studio. Nobody's even touched me on it yet. All right, I got a lot more of these. Who cares? Listen. Okay, we're coming for you. Here's the situation. Uh, three massive stories, two of them right off the bat. Uh, one is on how, uh, on Poker Bill that's uh, being, I just tweeted that out, and how it shows the deep corruption of our system. I'm going to do that second. Uh, what I'm going to do third is total, I mean, I'm going to try to, uh, the Obama White House needs to be obliterated, okay? They, they, they're the worst. You know how people always talk about, oh, the Senate's too conservative. No, right now it is patently obvious from everything that the Obama White House is far more conservative than the Senate Democrats. I, I just, I mean, to the point where I really think Obama is close to a Republican. I really do. I know the left, the, the Obama loyalists in the White House, oh, how dare you, oh, you were so unreasonable. Screw that. Try doing something progressive for once in your life. And then we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to go... Double barreled, man. I, I'm going to do it Phil Davidson style. That's coming up in the next segment. Uh, big show ahead for you. Uh, in this second hour, massively controversial theories based partly on science. Okay, all right. Anyway, let's get started. First topic is unemployment, and it's disastrous. Uh, new numbers are out, and uh, unemployment rate has climbed to 9.8%. So it has gone up. Now, we have added a net total of 39,000 jobs last month. Uh, that's a much lower number than expected. We expected around 150,000. But more people have entered the workforce, meaning that overall we lost pace in terms of percentages. So the unemployment rate goes up. The disaster continues. And we are told by the Republicans that if we just give the tax cuts to the rich, everything will be fine. We're told by the Democrats that don't worry, they got this thing on lockdown, it's going to come down any second now. It's not going to, because the Democrats don't know what they're doing, led by this incompetent Obama White House, and the Republican solutions are only ten times worse. So we're totally and utterly hosed. Let me explain why. Uh, number one, uh, Barack Obama was convinced by Tim Geithner and Rahm Emanuel and Larry Summers and the others that, hey, you know what, if we just patch over the problems of the economy, things will get better. So if we pretend the banks are healthy, it'll be great. If we give the banks a tremendous amount of money, whether it's $700 billion through TARP or $3.3 trillion worth of loans through the Fed, they will eventually loan it out to uh, American companies who will create jobs here. That is wrong on both counts. They did not lend it out to American companies, and American companies do not create jobs here. They create jobs in China in other parts of the world that they operate in. They find the labor there to be cheaper, and they have no interest in hiring you. That is why the unemployment rate is 9.8%, and will stay either there or get higher. You remember the Obama uh, folks in the beginning said it's going to get go down to 8% by now? And I got to go down to 8%. I'm not sure it's ever going to go down to 8%, unless there is a massive and complete change. Do you know what percentage of the jobs in America are the service sector? 80%. <laughs> what are we doing here? 80% is lawyers and waitresses and doctors. Now, lawyers, doctors, lovely jobs, sure, waitress, fantastic, depending on where you work. But that's not how you build the main engine of uh, a society and progress and jobs. We need manufacturing, and it's gone, gone. And, it's, and right now, we're doing nothing to get it back. And Obama's sitting around going, oh, if we get more money to the banks, will things get better? Timmy, will they give a Timmy? Will they get better? No, they're not going to get better. You think the banks give a damn about creating jobs in America? Oh, come on, man. At best, Obama is senselessly, hopelessly naive. And that is at best. Because at worst, he knows exactly what's going on and doesn't give a damn. I, I think it's somewhere in between those two things. <laughs> what you need, so what, by the way, what's the correct answer? Are you kidding me? How about 
One, you try to fix the underlying part of the problem of the economy. So for example, we, you've got to figure out how to create manufacturing jobs here. And you know what? Tariffs are a tough business and it's a, it's a dangerous game to play. But if you increase tariffs from China, then it provides an incentive to create jobs here. I'm not saying you do that. I'm saying you think about it. Because you think about, hey, my God, how do I incentivize people to do manufacturing here rather than abroad? One of the ways that you do that is making it more expensive to manufacture abroad and then ship it in here. Think about it. At least put it on the table. I mean, that is one of 28 things that you can do to incentivize people to actually hire here, hire. But you're doing none of that. You seem to not even understand the structural problems. Look, Robert Reich talks about this. Do you know that in the last uh, 30 years, well, uh, we now have the average male working 100 extra hours per year. We have the average female working an extra 200 hours, okay? And we took $2.3 trillion out of our houses, okay? We basically borrowed $2.3 trillion and we spent it. We spent it and we spent it. The whole economy is based on spending. But at some point, you have to make the money to spend it. You can't borrow the money to oblivion. And productivity, we're tapped out. We're working as hard as we can. And you know how much our wages have gone up? Almost nothing. That's for the middle class. The top 1%. They've gone up in their wealth 281%. They've gone up tremendously. This kind of unequal distribution of wealth, to forget about whether it's fair or not, it's terrible for the economy. The last time it was the rich had this high a percentage of our nation's income was in 1928, right before the Great Depression. We're headed for a massive collapse. And Obama's sitting there on, the, on board the Titanic and going, Hey, Timmy, what do you think we should put the chairs? It's really important to arrange the chairs, right? That's what I was told by Larry Summers. None of these things are going to work. And these banks are sucking us dry. And what are we doing about the banks? Not a damn thing. Jamie Dimon has an article. Uh, there's an article about Jamie Dimon, New York Times Magazine. It's coming out this weekend talking about how smart he is. He's the head of J.P. Morgan, right? And how he's a great banker and all this stuff. And he says uh, that J.P. Morgan needs to be larger. <laughs> okay, let me give you a sense of the problem. Lehman caused the financial collapse of the world. We need to do all those bailouts and the $3 trillion in loans, et cetera, because Lehman, along with the others, but they started this, right, when, when they went under and we let them go under, caused the collapse of the entire financial world, okay? And they were worth, they had assets of $600 billion. J.P. Morgan has assets of $2 trillion. If J.P. Morgan goes under, do you think they can... No, they don't bankrupt themselves. They bankrupt all of us. They will crater the entire global economy. And we, gotta get, we got the press trading, treating Jamie Dimon as if he's some sort of hero. Are you kidding me? And then when it collapses again, even though every guest we've had on here, I've asked, hey, show me how it doesn't collapse, and no one has an answer. No one has a logical answer. And when it collapses, all those people, not our guests, but all the people that are out there in the Washington media, the knuckleheads, the idiots, will say nobody could have seen it coming. David Broder will get up and write an article, no one could have seen it coming. Probably the best answer is to start another war to give more rich tax cuts. Okay, that's coming later in the program, by the way. If you think I'm sad about this, wait till you get a load of that. Um, by the way, uh, White House uh, Council of Economic Advisors has put out a uh, notice about the unemployment benefits and how it has helped 40 million Americans uh, since the beginning of the administration, 14 million directly, 26 million people in their families, and he, they claim the economy is growing 800,000 more jobs uh, because of the extra money that is in the system because of the unemployment benefits. 0.8% uh, faster in December because of the unemployment benefits. Of course, the Republicans want to take these the legs out from underneath unemployment. Do I think unemployment benefits help to solve the economic problem? No, I do not. No. I know a lot of progressives think that. I do not think that. I think it has a much better multiplier than tax cuts. I get that. But it is a Band-Aid. It doesn't solve the underlying problem at all. Okay. 
But here's the Republican miscalculation on this. Look, you can pull the legs out from these people, right? And they're getting, on average, $293 a week. And Republicans like Juan Williams, yes, Republicans like Juan Williams, I'm going to get to him next, claim, oh, they're living fat and easy off this, right? Okay. But here's what's going to happen. Once they stop getting that bare minimum, you thought they were angry now. But they're not really that angry. But when they have no money to feed their kids, that's when the anger comes. You take out that last leg, and all those people, 10% of the country is unemployed, 17% is underemployed, and you say to them, you got nothing, bupkis. We got no jobs. We're not creating any jobs. You're on your own, man. All you knew before is useless, and I'm giving you zero dollars and zero help. They're going to get angry real quick, man. If you think they were angry in 06 or 08 or even in 2010, you haven't seen the iceberg yet. So go ahead, Republicans. I dare you. Pull the leg out. See what happens. But I don't want you to do that. No, look, I'm not a big believer in unemployment benefits. I get their value. I took unemployment benefits. We talked about it on the third hour of the show yesterday. They help you, hopefully, for a transitional period, right? But they... But it, this, there's got to be a limit. Now, look, let me get to Juan Williams. So Megyn Kelly and Juan Williams are talking about unemployment benefits. They are hideously dismissive. And they, the whole conversation is about how the poor are basically lazy. And she talks about how, Megyn Kelly talks about how she's got a friend who's getting $400 in unemployment checks. That is, by the way, much larger than the average unemployment check. I don't know where her friend used to work. I don't know what the deal is, okay? But she, and she claims that her friend, because of that, won't get another job that he's sitting on his couch munching on Cheetos and Doritos because he's all set with $400 a week. Well, all right, I guess your friend's a bum, right? But not everybody on unemployment is a bum. Most of the people, they want to feed their kids, you dumbasses. All right, look at Juan Williams, this sellout. I can't call him an uncle. What can I call him? Cousin, nephew, what am I going to call this guy, okay? Look at this bitch taking two million dollars from Fox News. This bitch going to talk about how people are lazy. Okay, start it again. Let me hear this son of a bitch. To this cycle, and at some point, then it becomes a matter of you lose your work ethic, your values are impacted. You know, getting up, showing up, dressing well, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know that that's smart, but you know what? Apparently, people are making that calculation. I think it's a self-destructive one. But that's what people are talking about here in Washington more than ever, that in fact the government may not be helping somebody by offering them these benefits. Well, we may be hurting them. Yeah, yeah, we're hurting them by giving them the $293 a week. Yeah, and because we're training them to be lazy. I mean, look at the Juan Williams' assumptions. They're sitting on the couch. They're bums. How's that $2 million for you, Juan? Is it enough? Is it enough for you to sleep at night? They trot this guy out as the liberal. <laughs> and for him to come and say, yes, ma'am. And by the way, at the end of that segment, he literally said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the, the unemployed are bums. They should be spit upon. Fox News is totally right, ma'am. Where's my check? Mine isn't $400 a week. Mine's $2 million. I'm feeling pretty good, right, Juan? NPR should have fired him years ago. Okay, John Barrasso uh, is a moron, doesn't even know what the hell uh, they're debating. Talking about unemployment, he gets up on the uh, floor of the Senate and said, quote, this is about people who have been collecting unemployment benefits for 99 weeks, meaning that the extension of unemployment benefits would apply to people uh, that have exceeded 99 weeks. That is only 100% incorrect. He doesn't even know what they're debating. This does not apply to people uh, above 99 weeks at all, okay? Now, the issue is complicated, but if you're a goddamn senator who's going to vote on it, you might want to study up on it, as we did here. Turns out that there are many tiers of unemployment. For example, in the state level, you get 26 weeks. A lot of us are familiar with that, right? And what the federal government did is that they have several different tiers. Some are 20 weeks, some are longer, and you go from tier to tier. What they're debating now is... Can those people continue on their tiers? Because otherwise, if this thing runs out, let's say you're in the second tier, you cannot go on to the third tier, you cannot get another 20 weeks, whatever it might be, you're done, okay? So you don't get to go to the 99 weeks, 
okay? So this is not about past 99 weeks, this is about whether people can get to 99 weeks, okay? And some of their benefits will be cut off immediately. Two million people will have their benefits cut off instantly, and other two million will have it cut off in February. But Barrasso doesn't even know that. He's the Republican senator from Wyoming. He gets up and he's like, ah, 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 this is for people above 99 weeks. And then Boxer comes out and says, hey, listen, you schmuck, that's not the bill. He's like, oh, really? Oh, okay. That's what Fox News told me. And these are the guys who argued that you got to read the bill. Remember during the health care bill? They were like, oh, yeah, the, Republicans, uh, the Democrats haven't read it. <laughs> they haven't read it. Yeah, you got to read the bill. You have no idea what's in the bill. Because they don't give a shit. You think John Barrasso can worry his pretty ass over the unemployed? You think he gives one little iota of damn about the unemployed? He, you know, he's worried about how he's going to pamper his ass. Somebody get some powder. John Barrasso's ass needs pampering. These people don't give a shit about you, man. They don't give a shit about you. Okay, now, do you think that's bad? Now, look, that's all terrible, right? Yeah, but this is how the system works. All right, this is the perfect story to demonstrate what our politicians are about. Back in the day, uh, the gaming industry in this uh, country, the casinos, the largely the ones, the mega ones in Las Vegas, did not like the idea of online gambling because it was competition. So they used their bought man, Harry Reid, among many others that they have bought in the Senate and in Congress, to kill the idea of online gambling here in the U.S. So what did the Senate do? and the Congress do, they made online gambling illegal, okay? You cannot get banks, banks are not allowed to transfer money into online gambling sites because it would compete with Vegas. And Harry Reid, since he is a politician, like all other politicians in America, is completely bought and paid for. So he said, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. Harris, what would you like? Yes, a Mirage, absolutely, yes, sir. And they, so they passed that bill so there's no gambling. Now look, think about it this way. If you're a conservative, liberal, or libertarian, how would you view this bill? As a liberal, I don't like the bill. Get out of my life. If I want to gamble and I want to be an idiot, let me gamble, okay? Believe me, I've done it before. It hasn't worked out. But that's my business, not your business. As a conservative, you might say, oh, it's, you know, of the devil and Lucifer's involved. No, I'm against it, right? And the libertarians, I think, will side with the liberals on this one and say, get out of our lives, right? But that's not how any of the issues are decided in this country. So why am I bringing it up now? because Harry Reid has completely reversed his position. Why? Because his donors in Vegas, the casinos, have reversed their decision. They've decided, oh, you know what? All this money already went out to abroad. It turns out you can't stop the online gambling no matter how hard you try and no matter how many senators you buy because people are going to find a way to do it, and they have. And billions of dollars have flowed out of the country. And now Caesars is thinking, and they're the main company that's driving this, they're thinking, hey, you know what? I want that money, okay? So screw that, we're reversing positions, we want online gambling to be legal, and get a load of this, for the next two years, in order to crush the competition, and every American should be against this, this is exactly what's wrong with big government, right? I, we want a monopoly. For two years, only established casinos, people who run slot machines, etc can uh, do uh, set up online gambling sites. After that two years, maybe we will let our dogs uh, allow others to compete with us. But right now, there are bought bitches, so what they're going to do is they're going to do our bidding because we're their master and we paid them. So Harry Reid, without blinking an eye, goes, oh, absolutely. Did I say we were against online gambling before? Now I love online gambling and I want Caesars to have a monopoly over it. And by the way, will it pass? Now, that's why I brought up the conservatives, liberals, and libertarians. Of course it will, because we don't have a real debate in this country. My opinion or your conservative opinion or whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, the only thing that matters is the money, Lebowski. So the moneyed interests have decided that they're going to change the law that they had passed before. So they will change it. It's, and look, I could be wrong. That's why I always tell you. Let's see how it turns out. I don't tell you afterwards, I don't do Monday morning quarterback. I tell you on Saturday what's going to happen on Sunday. I'm telling you right now, that will be reversed. Online gambling will become legal because the casinos are going to make a lot of money off it and they're going to get a monopoly. Free market? No, these guys don't want a free market. They want to own, they want to kill competition because they're not capitalists, they're corporatists. 
And if you're a conservative or a libertarian or a liberal, you should hate them. But they don't listen to us because they're not our representatives. They're the representatives of the people who pay them, their donors and the lobbyists and the funders. That's what's at the heart of our problems. And we don't have any honest debates in this country. And until we fix that problem, we're all going to lose. We don't have, your conservative position isn't going to win, the liberal position isn't going to win, only the moneyed position is going to win. Wake up, young Turks. You thought I was pissed in the last segment. Wait till you get a load of me in this segment. New CBS News poll out saying that 53% of Americans would only like tax cuts for 98% of us, people making under $250,000. Uh, only 26% uh, would want them continued for everybody. But here's an interesting category. 14% say that no one should continue to get the Bush tax cuts. I'm actually in that category because I care about the deficit. And if we all get these tax cuts, including the rich, we're going to put about $3.7 trillion hole in the budget. That is unconscionable. And then we borrow that money from China, and then our kids, grandkids, et cetera, pay for it. In fact, a little later in our life, we're going to pay for it in a big way. So I don't want any of the Bush tax cuts, okay? But I'm a minority, 14%. Majority of them say, hey, give it to the 98%. Let's do some math, because apparently the people in the White House are stupid. They can't do math. When you put the 53 along with the 14% uh, who say either no t tax cuts for anybody, or no tax for the r cuts for the rich, that's 67% of the country that says no tax cuts for the top 2%. 67. 26% say tax cuts for everybody. 67 to 26. 67 to 26. So which side is the White House going on? Of course, they're good because they're either stupid, pathetically weak, or complicit, they're going to go with the 26%. So, oh no, Republicans said the, the, the tax cuts for the rich is what the country wants. We got to go in that direction. So here's poll number one. Number two, uh, there's a group called Anzalone List Research. They do research for Democrats from time to time. They're circulating a new memo on Capitol Hill. It says that 77% of the country, if asked, hey, should we give tax cuts to the rich or should we pay down the deficit or help create jobs through small business? In fact, they didn't even mention the jobs part. They just said help small business. 77% of the country agreed with that. 46% strongly agreed with that. 77% of the country say pay down the deficit rather than give more tax cuts to the rich. How clear do these numbers need to be before you gather up the courage to fight? But instead, of course, the Democrats, but I, shouldn't, I should be fair, because the Senate Democrats are apparently even though they're considered to be conservative, much more progressive than the massively conservative White House, who uh, is right now working with the Republicans to make sure the tax cuts for the rich get implemented, even though they promised before the election that they would fight that. And Obama promised before his election in 2008 that he was going to take away those tax cuts for the rich and that he was going to help to balance the budget with it. But he, apparently he lied. He lied. Because... Hey, look, how do you, do you not understand politics? I mean, how badly did you need to get lo to lose in 2010 before you understand, hey, you want what? You might want to defend your own positions. You, do you not understand what the number 67 is? Do you understand what the number 77 is? How stupid are you? But you're not stupid, right? Everybody knows Obama's not stupid. He went to all these great colleges. Uh, we did excellent in those colleges. Everybody tells us how brilliant he is. So what is it? Are you, stu are you so pathetically weak that you're, as soon as a Republican attacks you, oh my God, oh no, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the two-year extension. What more do you want? Or is it that you actually are rich and all the friends that you have and all the people you know in Washington, Chicago, everywhere else, they're all rich. And so you either consciously or unconsciously want the tax cuts for the rich. Which one is it? Because there's no political argument, none whatsoever, that says this is a smart political move. Oh yeah, you know what? Let me go against 67% of the country who says do not give the tax cuts to the rich. Unjustifiable. 
So uh, and what, what is their rationale for this? First of all, which way are they going? Let's go to Robert Gibbs, the White House spokesperson, who's going to speak out of both of his uh, sides of his mouth. Here he is. He says, the president continues to believe that extending middle class tax cuts is the most important thing we can do for our economy right now. And he applauds the House for passing a permanent extension. Now, because the House passed an extension without giving uh, the tax cuts for the rich. But here comes the interesting part. Gibbs continues, but... But because Republicans have made it clear that they won't pass a middle class extension without uh, also extending tax cuts for the wealthy, the president has asked Director Liu and Secretary Geithner to work with Congress to find a way forward. In other words, the president asked them to get on their knees and say, how can I service you, GOP? And Tim Geithner and Jack Liu are, uh, uh, can't wait to do that anyway. <laughs> Geithner is a former Republican who has had nothing but absolutely positively Republican proposals the entire time he's been the Treasury Secretary. So he's like, do I get to make a deal with the Republicans? Win-win <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, tax cuts for us. Screw the middle class. So they're going in there. And then get, this administration official that talked to Huffington Post, uh, to me, had the most telling of the quotes. He said, quote, the House will vote on their tax cut package. It may pass. Senate will then vote, and then it will fail. And then I ask, what next? You pathetic pushover. What next should be a fight? What next should be Ving Rhames saying, step aside, Butch. I'm going to bring a couple of my homeboys with some lead pipes and a blowtorch and go to work on my homes. That's what's next. Instead, they think the only possible solution, the only thing that can co possibly come up next if the Republicans stand their ground is to give in to the Republicans. Do you understand the mindset? You get why I think that's the most important quote? Because the White House thinks, well, if the Republicans hold strong and they really want that, our only option is to give in to them. No, that is not your only option. Your, other op your option is to be the other party and fight back. And fight back for the people who voted for you. Pathetic in every conceivable way. There's no hope for Obama. He's He's going to give in every time. He's such a sap. Or, like I said, or much worse, he's in on it. And I know a lot of you think that. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know what to think. All I know is the results are ridiculous. And then they call this guy a socialist. <laughs> he's not even a progressive, man. These positions are to the right of Ronald Reagan. I've proven it a hundred times on air. This guy's a Republican, man. Look at what Tom Harkin has to say. He's got the Senate Democrats this mad. Tom Harkin says, I just think if Obama caves on this, look, a senator is saying caves on this. Those are that's strong words. Caves on this, then I think that he's going to have a lot of swimming upstream to do. He said he campaigned on allowing the rates for rich to expire, was very strong on that, and sometimes there are things that are just worth fighting for. The Democrats in the Senate want you to fight. And here's one more, and this is, you know, for Obama, maybe this is the only thing he pays attention to. Harkin said, uh, hey, what happens in 2012 if he, Obama does this? He would then just be hoping and praying that Sarah Palin gets the nomination. What does it take to get through to Barack Obama? What does it get for him to fight? What does it take for him to be on our side? What does it take for him to be... Not, it's not even progressive, man. Is, are, is, are these pundits telling me that 67% of the country is progressive, that they're liberals? Okay, I'll take it. Two-thirds of the country are liberals? No, it's the centrist position to say you balance the budget. You don't give another $700 billion tax cut to the richest people in the country. If you don't understand that either, you don't know a thing about politics or you don't want to know because secretly you want the tax cuts for the rich. JR, look, I got a hundred more things on this. I got to ask you the question I always ask you. Which one is it? Stupid, weak, or complicit? It's hard to say now, man. It's getting I harder. can't believe it's complicit. I, I, maybe <laughs> I'm naive. I mean, you know, and you guys write in, and I know you'll tell me I'm naive. It's, 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 I think it's, more, more so, it could be a mix of all of them. A little bit more of the scared weakness part because 
of how rabid things are happening. The way they did the fake grassroots things with the Tea Party and everything. So then he goes, oh, oh, oh. Because it, it, a little example of it could have been with the whole, um, uh, I forget her name. When they were scared of Glenn Beck talking about uh, the lady with the NAACP and then, uh, you know, black folks should be this way. And all, Shirley yeah, Sherrod. Shirley yeah. Sherrod. When they went crazy about that. I think that's kind of indication of the way yep. the mindset is. So it's Absolutely. it's it's afraid of whatever it is that of any opposition. Rather than have any kind of opposition, you'd rather just go along with it because they want what's best for the country too. Let's try it their way. Yeah, no, it's, I, I definitely vote that way. I could be wrong, but I'm going with B. Weak, sad, sad weakness. And the minute they say boo, Obama runs for the hills. And. To me, I, I think that might actually be the worst of the lot. Because if you're stupid, what can you do? You were born dumb. <laughs> and if you're complicit, then hey, actually you're clever. You found a way to trick the American people and secretly get the tax cuts that you want. But if you're weak, then you're really sad. It's, imp- it's so hard to respect a guy that... I just keep using the word because it is. It's pathetically weak. All right, you want to get more evidence on this? So. You know, it's his stupid effing deficit deficit commission. They get together and they decide, hey, you know what? Uh, Our brilliant idea is more tax cuts for the rich. I've told you this before. You know, I just, it hurts my head to think about it. By the way, Dick Durbin went along with it today. Dick Durbin's supposed to be a progressive. He's supposed to be one of the more liberal senators uh, in the Democratic Party, number two uh, for the Democrats. You know, with Durbin and Reid, you got weak and weaker, right? So Durbin was on the deficit commission. He says, hey, okay, let's cut Social Security, let's cut Medicare, and let's give another gigantic tax cut to the rich. But it's not even, it's even worse than that. It's not, it's a tax cuts for the rich, gigantic. Like, Bush would be embarrassed at how large the tax cuts for the rich are, according to the deficit commission, okay? But you increase taxes for the middle class by a trillion dollars. Oh, fuck you. (laughs) I mean... That, that is the only two words you could say about the deficit commission. 11 out of the 18 guys signed on to it, including many Democrats, including Dick Durbin. And uh, Barack Obama is uh, delighted with their work and thinks it's lovely, etc. cetera. We, we, are, we don't have a guy in the White House. We don't have him. Okay. So the guy who pushed this all along, the propaganda machine, in this case was not the Koch brothers, is a guy by the name of Pete Peterson. He's been pushing the idea that Social Security is bankrupt and needs to be torn down. Uh, for decades now. He's got the Pete Peterson Foundation. He put together, and this story has an awesome twist. He put together uh, this thing called America Speaks, and uh, he did these panels all across the country, in fact, 57 of them, and brought together 3,500 Americans. And so they do, they speak to these uh, Americans first, they get them in a panel, and they give them propaganda about, oh, Social Security's going bankrupt, it's broke, it's terrible, isn't it time to give more tax cuts to the rich, et cetera. And then they have them speak, liberals, conservatives, libertarians, everybody in the room, and see if they can come to conclusions. So they do this, and the result is awesome. You know what happens? At the end of the panels, the conservatives adopt liberal positions at almost two to one rate more than the liberals go to. In fact, the liberals almost don't go to conservative positions at all. Once they start talking, the liberals convince the conservatives to come to their side. Now, those conservatives would never call themselves liberal, but when you look at the positions, here, I'll give you the positions. On the issue of taxing the very wealthy, conservatives, uh, 24% of them, ended up, ended up sporting the uh, idea of uh, so taxing the rich, whereas only 12% uh, became less supportive. So by a two-to-one margin, at the end of the discussions, they're like, yeah, you're right. We should tax the rich more. Okay. Now, the second issue, how about cutting defense? 39% of conservatives, by the end, decided that cutting defense was a good idea. Only 9% thought it was a worse idea. That's over a three to one margin. They're like, yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> we should cut defense. But to, to that point, let me give you some startling numbers here. Reductions in defense spending by at least 5%, meaning we should cut defense by 5%. That's, you know, if you told Barack Obama that, he'd go scream for this. Oh my God, they'll call me weak on foreign policy and defense. <laughs> right? You know how much uh, the people that, that were to get put here propagandized, and at the end, you know how much of them wanted to cut defense? 85%. 85%. And Pete Peterson, who put this together, must have been thinking, no, no, I didn't want you to cut defense. I wanted you to cut Social Security. All right, point number three on raising taxes 
on the middle class as well as the wealthy, more than twice as many conservatives became more supportive as became less supportive. Okay, so even taxing the middle class by a, by the end, twice as many conservatives thought, hey, maybe that's not such a bad idea as they did going in. Okay, <laughs> so they look at the whole thing. All right, you know what? One more social security. So they said. Uh, now remember, the whole point of this was let's cut social security. But they get the people to talk. America speaks, right? And at the end, and they had to publish this, and it's awesome. It's exactly the opposite of what they wanted. Uh, when asked, um, "Hey, uh, should we cut Social Security at all?" 61% said, "Nope, absolutely not. Not a scintilla." What happened? I, the whole point of the thing was to cut Social Security. They got together. They talked. Nope, not buying it. Not buying it. Um, the only popular option regarding Social Security, and this was supported by 90% of the participants, was to have the wealthy pay a higher portion. They didn't stutter. They're very, very clear on these issues. Even in a group put together by one of the most conservative billionaires in the country, okay, he can't shake the American people off of fundamentally progressive positions. Those conservatives think they're conservative. When you ask them which side are you on on any particular issue, especially if you have a conversation with them and get beyond the talking points, they go, oh, well, you're right, I'm on your side. But Barack Obama right now is full speed sprinting towards the right. Sad, sad. He's the one that, Pete Peterson's the one that pushed for the deficit commission in the first place. Do you know that? We wouldn't have had a deficit commission if it wasn't for this billionaire that's been dying to cut it. And Obama said, oh, yes, sir, Pete Peterson, sir, of course, sir. You'd like a deficit commission to cut Social Security and to cut taxes on the rich? Absolutely, sir. And he did, and Obama's is supporting it. In a best-case scenario, he is a terrible politician. It, you know, I was talking to somebody, and of course the question always comes up, how the hell did he win in 2008? And the assumption, conventional wisdom is, he must be a good politician, otherwise he wouldn't have won in 2008. And the person I was talking to made a great point. He said, what are you talking about? I've got one name for you as to why he won in 2008. George W. Bush. Okay. He's like, after Bush destroyed the country, your grandma could have run as a Democrat and won. Now the thing is, how did he beat Hillary Clinton? Well, he pretended to be a progressive. Do you remember? Hillary Clinton was a conservative and Barack Obama was a liberal. That's why he beat her. And as soon as he won, he's like, yeah, liberals, kiss my ass. Progressives, 67% of the country, kiss my ass. I'm going to go make out with the Republicans. I got to stop before I get in more trouble. Young Turks.